Shayab Akhtar as he went to his position at mid on. It's about the possibility of running on the wicket on the pitch. And another good delivery. Just the three steps for Mark Taylor. Just seem to have a battle at the moment, Alan, between two young bowlers who want to bowl faster than the other one. That's exactly right, David. And Zach, you, you don't really want to be out there at this sort of situation. They're both bowling at good pace, really testing these Australian opening batsmen out and trying to outdo each other, trying to get that first breakthrough. Very good ball there from Mohamed Zaid. As Jeff Boycott would say, the best place to play fast bowling is from the other end. And that's probably the situation this morning. And dragging Mark Taylor forward, but just playing down the line, not following the ball. And if the Australian players walked out of the middle thinking, well, this is going to be a slightly easier without Wazim Akram there. They've taken about 20 deliveries to realise that that's not the case. Well, these two young fast bowlers have been very impressive. That ball just passing Mark Taylor's outside edge. <coughs> just played down the line, the ball angling across him. Very open-chested bowler is Mohamed Zahid, but generating good pace. Just causing the left-handed Mark Taylor some problems with that angle. Plenty of thinking for the Australian batsman at the moment. And another good delivery. No ball called by Nazir Jr. Maybe uh, Mohamed Zahid just bowling a fraction shorter of the two. Even though it's gone past the outside edge twice. Perhaps not as dangerous as Akhtar at the moment. Quite clearly over the front line on that occasion. Four slip coming into place now, going twice past the outside edge of the Australian captain. So mid on has again been moved. The mid, -on, mid on position is vacant. That's man has gone to fourth slip. No ball again. So just a few problems, even though the Pakistan bowlers are bowling beautifully and with good pace. Some no ball problems for both the bowlers. A running on the pitch problem for Akhtar. So I guess there's just a few things in the Australians' favour to some extent. Well, they're that keen to get at the uh, batsman, just overstepping uh, with their enthusiasm. So as a captain, you just try and calm them down a little bit. You don't want to take that enthusiasm away from them, but just sort of, to, you know, ask them just to take a few deep breaths. Don't try and push it too hard. We want to take wickets. Don't have to sort of outdo each other with uh, impressing everyone with their pace. Just calm down a fraction and get the ball in the right spot. And another no ball. So consecutive no balls, three of them. And what you don't want now when you're one nil down in the series is the wicket to come off a no ball. That is as deflating as anything on the cricket field. Particularly when you know your bowlers are trying so darn hard and bowling some good deliveries but just making a fundamental error well he's only just going over David there's only a couple of inches in it and it's probably just uh, that last leap before he uh, hits the bowling crease he's just carrying that back foot a little bit too far and therefore he's pushing over the front line so probably just take his bowling mark back just a fraction and hopefully he'll be able to cut that front line with his uh, front foot So just to show you what's happened this over so far, the red ball showing the number of deliveries left, the blank one, so three deliveries left, three legal deliveries left, even though Mohamed Azahir has bowled six balls, he has bowled three no balls. New law taking place from this series, from a no ball, the batting side gets the run for the no ball, plus 
what they score from that delivery as well. And of course, they get the extra ball at the end of the over. So the no ball, particularly if the batting side scores off it, is a real penalty for the fielding team. If anything, Mohamed Zahid, he, he's striving for pace and he's just bowling a fraction short. He's overstepping the mark a little bit, but just his general length has probably just been a fraction short. If he can get the ball up another yard or two, he'll be right in that troublesome zone for the left-handed Mark Taylor. He's dragging the ball across the left-hander at good pace. He's got slips in, in place there for the edge. You just get the ball up a little more. That'll be the uh, zone that Mark Taylor might have the more trouble with. Mark Taylor yet to get off the mark, and uh, there is an interesting field position here. EJ is at backward point, is behind point. So four steps to gully and the man behind point. And half the occasions that Mark Taylor has played the ball this morning, it's gone behind point. A couple of outside edges or ha outside halves of the bat going to gully and fourth slip. So it's just a, an indication that the Pakistanis are thinking about their work at the moment. Taylor not punching the ball in front of point. The pace of the ball and the way that Mark Taylor is playing, the ball seems to be sliding to some extent off the left-handers face of the bat and going behind point. So the Pakistanis are thinking about their work this morning. And a good bounce from well played by Mark Taylor. So a long over, hard work, but Australia none for five. Good morning, it's good morning to you, Mark. Yeah, it was uh, good fun there. Off the hip, casually. Very tall, lean young man, very different in uh, Bill to Shah Bakhtar, very strong in the shoulders and bigger in the beam. Beautifully balanced. Yes, it's been good uh, opening bowling stint from these two fast bowlers. Especially Shwe Bakhtar has looked pretty slippery. Mohammed Zahid, uh, predominantly a front-on action. It's not the classic side-on thing, but uh, very fast as well. Had to cope with a severe back injury early on in his career, but has come back. Uh, this is his comeback season for Pakistan. Played in Sahara Cup. It is meant for five-day cricket. Uh, did struggle a little bit in the one-days. But he's looking good. Slater has looked uh, pretty confident. Although dropped uh, at point by Jaz. But, uh, he's looked uh, pretty comfortable. Played uh, with a straight bat. Pakistan uh, will surely be missing uh, Vaseem Akram. It's a good wicket uh, for the left armour to uh, get purchased from. Nicely off the hip. It's remarkable the number of young players. Yusuf Yohana here underneath the lid. Really is remarkable. Four changes to, uh, to this side. 
tremendous depth, but of course it's a very big ask for Pakistan without Wazim Akram and Wakar Yunus. It changes the mood, always, of a Pakistan team. Just off the hip, no ball again. And really, he is having some troubles. Uh, it's been a disconcerting start, in fact, for the Pakistanis, with Chabakta having so much trouble running on the pitch and incurring the wrath of Steve Buckner. And now Muhammad Nazir Jr. is getting very weary of calling no balls against Muhammad Zahid. Yes, both these uh, fast bowlers trying everything. Both want to establish their credential at this level of the game, and uh, so far they bowl well, although uh, Mohammad Zahid has struggled with his run-up. Overstep now quite a few times. That is why they're lagging behind in uh, the overrate. Gets this one fairly fine. Nicely filled it in the deep. Shah Bakhtar and a delightful return on the turn. Didn't really have time to balance. Threw it on the turn. A lovely throw. Yes, good athletic work from the speedster. Very loose. Although he's uh, put in everything in his bowling, but uh, looked very comfortable there at the boundary. Schwab did have a splendid uh, series in South Africa. He won Pakistan a test match also. Bowled particularly fast and did move the ball as well. Short and just sways inside, and it's none for 14. Muhammad Zahid, who had a lot of troubles bowling from the far end, the shell end, incurring uh, the wrath this time of Nazir Jr., Muhammad Nazir Jr., who played 15 tests for Pakistan, toured Australia, now in his second test as umpire. And he uh, was very concerned about where Muhammad Zahid was running, overstepping the mark. Well, he was overstepping the mark while Chobakta has been running on the deck. And that is a long, long, long way away. change in the commentary position it's appropriate that we should have someone who worked from a, a long run and joining David Hooks who worked for a shorter run as I hit at the top of his mark Michael holding with David Hooks thank you Michael <laughs> and it's a very good morning to Michael holding after such a long way traveling Michael you look reasonably refreshed Good morning, Hooksy, and hello to all the viewers, wherever you may be. I'm not feeling too bad, considering that I had to travel all the way from the Caribbean, starting off about 9 p.m. Caribbean time Sunday night. Got to Pakistan 5.30 p.m. yesterday afternoon. Pretty long haul, but I haven't really felt too bad. And uh, he plays it very well. So Langer is off the mark. Just replays the shot, but coming from Perth, he's used to playing uh, the short delivery, and he does play very well square of the wicket. And, Michael, you've been sitting here for the last hour or so watching uh, two young fast bowlers, one in just his sixth test and one in his fourth test, and you must have been pretty impressed at the pace that they generated. Yes, both of them are pretty quick. Mohamed Zahid 
I think has had to change his action slightly since he has had his back problems. We know what that can do, but it seems as if he has recovered quite well. No discernible change of pace, no loss of pace rather. But I think Shoaib Akhtar just marginally showing a bit more pace than Mohamed Zahid. I think though Hooksy when it gets to that pace, the difference in pace is not a great deal when, once you're in the 90s. One bowling at perhaps about 93 miles per hour. I think that's about 156 kilometers per hour. The other one fractionally below that. Not a great difference. No, you're probably right. And nicely tucked away. So Mate will look for a comfortable two. And again, no matter how quickly you bowl, you've got to get it in the right spot still. Tilly Man, who's been there now over an hour or so, faced some 37 deliveries, Mark Taylor. 36 balls, in fact, for his 10. So just had a couple of times that he played and missed that. But he's been able to survive the first hour or so. Drinks will be after this over. And he has seen the loss of Michael Slater at the other end. I don't think Mark Taylor would be too perturbed about the fact that he has now faced 37 deliveries for just 10 runs. I think he's concentrating pretty much on staying at the crease, seeing these two new ball bowlers off. Ball certainly will lose its sheen on this very hard surface. This pitch is pretty dry. And although Mushtaq has been getting the ball to turn a bit, I think he really wants to see these two new ball bowlers off. That's the main objective. Lost one wicket, as you said, but if they can go through until lunch without losing any more wickets, I think he'll be quite happy. And some good pace still. So umpire Buckner calls over and drinks. And after the first hour or so, Australia is one for 20. Which probably puts the run at about... Maybe 40 metres there, run up. Maybe 40 metres or so from where they start now to the stump. So you bowl a couple of no balls, you do that eight or nine times every over. Nice for a long time. And the point I was trying to make earlier on about the amount of energy that they will be using to run up as well. Be sprinting 40 metres every time you bowl a delivery. It's quite a bit of distance, quite a bit of energy that you are using up. And I'm not too sure Amir Sahil should be continuing too much longer with Shoaib Akhtar. He really sprints in Shoaib Akhtar. Uses a lot of energy and as we just saw, that last over was very expensive. Perhaps he's just feeling the strain at the moment. And some good watching from Langer. That's one of his skills. Quite a pleasant day, even though the bowlers are working hard this morning, around about 30 degrees Celsius. 84, 85 degrees Fahrenheit in the Imperial system. And Langer cracks it away to the boundary. So between gully and backward point, off the back foot, Langer repeats the shot, but he got most of the bat on the ball and a good reward for him. So he goes to 14. Not in total control of this shot here, Justin Langer. Went in the air for quite some time. 
but there's certainly runs to be had if he can find the gap. So a couple of boundaries in consecutive overs will please the Australians in the Australian dressing room. And again, it gets past the man of gully. Mahmoud at gully, who's already taken a catch this morning. So a couple of runs again. So Langer doing a very good job for Australia. Out first ball in the first test. LBW to Wazim Akram. And a big shout this morning, first ball from Akhtar, given not out by umpire Buckner. And from then he's made the most of it. He's gone to 16, just 16 deliveries with a couple of boundaries. Hasn't been there for half an hour yet, Justin Langer. So just being a little bit more positive at the moment and looking pretty comfortable. with the, that shot from Justin Langer going in the air earlier on down towards it, the backward point. There are now two gullies in place. Bat pad has been dispensed with. And lovely shot again. So Langer gets inside the ball. In fact, he jumped inside the ball on that occasion. And really is showing his liking this morning for the ball that's outside the off stop. More a pull shot than a hook shot. And Alanga goes to 20. Australia 1 for 39. <laughs> 